Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Today, inshallah, our topic for grade 9 under the title, The Name of Allah, a Sitir. A Sitir means the concealer. What we need to do today to understand Allah's name, the concealers, and to evaluate how can we live with this name. The meaning of this name. What does it mean, a sitir? al bayhaqi one of the scholars, says, Sitir means he who covers up and conceals his servants profusely. And he doesn't scandalize them openly. He loves that his servants cover themselves up and avoid that which defames them. Another interpretation of this name, Ibn al-Athir, one of the Muslim scholars as well, says, Indeed, Allah is modest and sitir, who loves modesty and concealment. Sitir means he who loves the concealment and the safeguarding, preservation, and shielding of his creation in all his affairs and wills. The impact of this name on us. How does this name leave an impact on Muslim? Number one, verily, Allah is sitir and he loves shielding and preservation he covers the defects of his servant and he conceals many of their sins he hates disgraceful and shameful matters and he hates scandals and that they are committed openly or disclosed to the people number two allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands with sitr concealment shielding and he hates it that one posts about disobedience or mentions or spreads it among the believers allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah al-nur says indeed those who like that immorality should be spread or practiced among those who have believed will have a painful punishment in this world and the hereafter and allah knows and you don't no. And the Messenger of Allah, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, informed us that the person who commits sins openly and discloses them to the people will not be forgiving. The Prophet وسلم, says, All the sins of my followers will be forgiving except those of the Mujahirun. Mujahirun means those who commit sin openly or disclose their sins to the people. Number three, if it happens that a true believer falls into sin or is deficient towards a duty, he would shield himself intensely and would not disclose it to others. Ibn Umar ibn Khattab عن, narrated that he heard that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, says, A believer will be brought near to his Lord on the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will involve him in his mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him confess his sins by saying, Do you remember doing this sin and this sin? He will reply, My Lord, I remember. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, I covered it up for you in the life of the world, and I will forgive it for you today. Then the record of his good deeds will be handed to him. Number four, the Prophet ﷺ encouraged and urged the covering up of the faults of Allah's servant, of other people. He ﷺ said, any slave who covers, anyone who covers up the fault of another slave or another person in, in this world, Allah will conceal and cover his faults on the day of judgment. How can you live or how can we live by this name? Number one, keep your sins to yourself. 
apart from covering your own sins, you should or let me see how many people actually post about their bad deeds the bad places they visited the bad people who company or whose company they shared number two we should as well we should not expose others faults apart from covering your own sin you should also keep away from exposing the sins of others when they did not commit their sins openly how many people are eager to seek out and expose the sins and the bad deeds of others sometimes just to make themselves look better number three call on a steer there is a beautiful supplication from the sunnah in which the verb of satara sat, is used part of the morning and evening of the call remembrance is that the prophet ﷺ used to say it the Prophet ﷺ used to say this morning and night, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-'afwa wal-'afiyata fi dunya wal-akhirah. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-'afwa wal-'afiyah fi dini wa dunyaya wa ahli wa mali. Allahumma astur awrati wa amin rawati. Allahumma ahfazni min bayni yadayya wa min khalfi wa an yamini wa an shimali wa min fawqi wa a'udhu bi'azamatika an ugtala min tahti. Which means, O oh Allah, I ask you for pardon and well-being in this life and the next. O oh Allah, I ask you for pardon and well-being in my religious and worldly affairs and my family and my wealth. O oh Allah, veil my weaknesses and set at ease my dismay. This is the dua I was said with the Prophet So at the end of this lesson, we have learned what does it mean this name and how to act upon this name. Thank you so much. May Allah accept our deeds. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.